Yo, this is Scott Morris. You are now watching No Lizine. This episode is brought to you by the Loyalty Club, one of the hottest brands out where they keep their items limited and only for the loyal few. Check us out online at theloyaltyclub.us or if you're in New Orleans area, you can check us out at our flagship store, 841 Fulton Street. You already know what time it is. Only for the loyal few club time. All right, so for the people who don't know, I'm like, tell them, I'm like, where you from? I'm from Brooklyn, New York, born and raised. Uh, it's a place of many greats that people may know of, you know, Big Daddy Kane, Jay-Z, Fabulous, just some of a few, but that's where I'm from, Brooklyn, New York. So growing up in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. I'm like, who inspired you to actually, I'm like, get, I'm like, into the online music industry? Uh, so when I was in high school, I was a really big fan of Lil Wayne. Um, Lil Wayne was everything to me during that time, just seeing his consistency. Uh, that was the time of Young Money. He had just signed Drake and Nicki Minaj, and he was just on every song. So I was really interested in that. Um, and then as I got to see more about the music business, I really like what Drake has done. I really like now what Larry June is doing, um, Don Kennedy. Um, so that's what I got me more in tune with too. You know what I'm saying? So just seeing a lot of people who are artists, who are CEOs, they like really put people in position as entrepreneurs. So those are some people that inspire me now, but Wayne was who I really saw and really liked. And most Def too. Most Def I was really big on due to the fact that I liked how he wore his suits. Uh, I liked certain records that he had, like Respiration was dope. And then I would always hear about his performances in Brooklyn too. Nice. So you know, I, I, when I was young, I didn't even realize um, Cash Money was so big. Yeah. And I thought it was on like local because we saw him here. And yeah. like, I didn't notice it, yeah, but LeWayne was big until seeing him on like BET or things like, like, uh, things like that. Yeah. So like, it, it, but it shocked me because Juvenile said that, you know, he was one of the first rappers from the South that the people on the East Coast actually like really accepted. Oh, all right. Because, um, you know, and like Outkast was like, you know, I'm like complaining like, you know, but the South got something to say. Yeah, I remember that. But like, that Juvenile so. said, he used to go like to the I'm like, roughest clubs and everybody that still rock with him. All right. It's the reason why like Jay Z got on like 400 degrees and all that. Like he yeah. said, he always was accepted in like the East Coast. That's hard. Yeah. And I, I know, like we said, when there was a lot of parties, you know what I'm saying? That like when I was in high school, we was throwing parties, or in college, we was throwing parties. When Juvenile's record came on, like the whole atmosphere would change. It was like it would always take to another level. I remember like the first party I had, Juvenile came on. Great experience. Great time. Juvenile still have that classic. Yeah, <laughs> great time. Then the twenty five year leader. Huh? Facts. Gotcha. So you know, how did you decide that you was gonna start like you know bringing artists on the road and just and, and just start trying to get them deals and and I'm also I'm like book artists as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it started with like Dean's tour. Like so, uh, I saw Wiz Khalifa go on a college tour. I didn't know how it was done. I just remember seeing him during that time with Wiz, Big Sean, and, and all of those artists was just like doing mixtapes. And I remember uh, Wiz Khalifa went on a tour and I just was like, I could do that. You know what I'm saying? Like I was like rapping, but unsure if I wanted to rap and I was just doing stuff. And then I was popular in my college. So I came up with this concept called Dean's List Tour. So that was my first uh, tour. Cause um, I wanted to go on tour. Cause that's what Wiz Khalifa do it. Then, when I dropped the flyer on social media, like which shows the importance of marketing, because I had a good, clean flyer. We didn't have the dates yet. We just had like a couple of my friends was in position. They was active in student activities, and we just put a flyer out that we doing a tour, and it was called Dean's List Tour. And 250 people came to audition. Uh, we didn't even have dates. We didn't even know if the schools was booked. I knew mine was booked because I knew my pull in my school, but. We tried it, and then after 250 people came out, uh, the next year we did it, like we did university in Northern Texas, and then we did Howard University, and then that's what really made me see the impact. Like, people were posting about it on social media, some people didn't make it, like they felt like their world was crushed, that led me to create more bookings, because if 500 people, when we got to that point of auditioning, not everybody gonna make it. And I didn't want people to feel like their dreams was like not possible just because you don't get selected here. Because we choosing judges, you know. So um, after we did that, I just saw like the impact in the community. I would see this artist, so I got to see certain artists like blow up off the platform, or certain people become who they need to be further down in life, and just having a part in their journey. And I just felt that was my way to contribute. 
just being able to give opportunities. I've always just been somebody that just liked playing a role in people's lives or putting people in position. I've just always found joy in knowing that I could put these pieces together. Gotcha. So, like, how important it is, I mean, to you to actually like, take artists on the road and, like, you know, help them? And also, if how, well, if how important do you think it is, like, for the artists as well? Because, you know, if, like, most artists these days just think you can just post your song on the internet mm -hmm. and you're going to go viral. Oh, I think it's big for, it's an educational thing because, you know, the way I look at it is, right, prior to social media, there was guerrilla marketing, right? Uh, Lenny S. said that you got to uh, you know, go where your target demographic is, right? He said that in one of his interviews, like, when they was coming up, or uh, let's say Fat Joe had a concert or another artist had a concert, and he wanted to prove to Jay-Z that I'm a great addition to your team, they would have flyers that they would have, and they would post by certain areas, right, just to get the word out. So social media can only do so much, right? You can post it, it don't mean a lot of people see it. And it doesn't always create the um, relationship that you need or that emotional connection. So you have to meet people in person a lot of times to establish trust. And it's a lot of markets, you know? Like, you may not, let's say you don't blow up. Let's say you're from New York and you don't blow up in New York. It don't mean you can't still blow up. You might, the music that you make probably don't connect with that market at that moment. Maybe you might need to go to the South. Maybe you might need to go to the West. Maybe you might need to go to a different market that appreciate what it is. Because as long as you're telling your truth and we can feel it, you still got a story. So I just feel it's important for artists to really get on the road, meet people, grow their base, so they can actually identify who uh, their fans and supporters are. Right. And I always tell artists every day, like, hey, but it doesn't matter uh -huh. like, if I like your song. Right. You just got to find your artist. Right. Like, people are always trying to like, judge off of a certain people. Like... Like, if it's plenty of songs on the radio that I don't like at all. Correct. Mm -hmm. But they found the audience. Correct. And working at SOBs taught me that too. So for those that don't know what SOBs is, so SOBs is like one of our legendary venues. Um, I worked there at the time, which also taught me that there's an audience for everybody. Uh, like, I had to book artists that I normally would never listen to their music, and it don't mean they ain't good. Like, if you can sell tickets and people are buying tickets to see you, that means somebody like your music. Even if I don't play it, there's an audience. So... Working at SOBs taught me whether uh, you make gangster rap, you make hip hop, social, conscious music, drill, whatever you make, as long as you know your pocket, there's somebody that's gonna buy in. Um, and that's what it taught me about like all these genres of music or even getting outside of where you're at. You just have to go find them. But I learned that really just working at SOBs because I was throwing a lot of shows, but working and having to book for a venue, openers or or line certain artists up for it. Cause like when I had to do um I remember when Lotto ran to New York, um I had to really like listen, submit and choose an artist to really like be one of the openers to help with that show when she was first coming up. So like it just teaches you like anybody can make it as long as you figure out who you need to like market to. So I'm like what's the average day like for you? Uh, it depends on the day. Like, uh, today we, we got some, like, immunity this is for me to have. We went to Walmart, picked up my eight, we came here, now we got the interview. Uh, yesterday, what we did, we drove to New Orleans. Uh, I wanted to drive from? Oh, Atlanta. Seven hours. Oh, okay. It was cool, though. <laughs> I thought you drove from New York. Like, nah, nah, nah. Drive. I, I've actually did, I've actually, like I said, look, let me let me break it down to y'all. Like, when I first was going to, like, South by South the first time, I drove 28 hours. You know what I'm saying? Like, just to go get out there, meet who I need to meet. Like, I ain't got no problem getting on the road. a long ride home, though. It is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, but you got to have a good playlist when you're going to do stuff like that because you will get bored. You will get antsy. People will ask how long till we read. So, you got to have a good playlist when you do things like that. And that's my suggestion. But um, yesterday, like I said, we came down, drove from New Orleans. As uh, soon as we got in, checked to the Airbnb. Uh, we did a mic drop. KG had to do the mic drop. Then we did a show. So each day is different. I might do emails, book people. And I never know what's going to happen based on the day. But I just always have a lot of things that I got to do. Okay. So being in the music industry for a while now, tell us what do you enjoy most about it and tell us what do you actually hate about it. Oh, like I said, in the space I'm at now, it's not, not too much that I really, like, hate because it's really an opportunity to learn from every experience. You know, like, you may not like people's replies in that moment, but it teaches you that, all right, cool, 
how do I control my emotions to make sure I stay solid in those situations? Or let's say you got a situation where it's unorganized, you figure out what could you do or what could you learn from that moment in order for you to better your business? Let's say you take a loss, you know what steps to take in order to not take the same loss. So I like the, the part right now where it's just learning. It helps me grow because my goal is to be one of the biggest um, execs in this game. So I got to go through all of these things in order to become who I desire to be. I, I really enjoy just really like being a part of a lot of people's um, stories. Like uh, right now we got an artist that uh, Nate and I is collaborating on. Her name is like Me and Snow. So being able to see her go from 30K to 100K or in six months, watch her come out of nowhere. And now a lot of people are interested or want to work with her or she's been to a lot of markets or she's done a lot of mic drops or interview and she came out of nowhere. It's just us utilizing what we've learned in the past and now knowing what to do for the mistake. So it's cool just to see everything that happens now. Gotcha. So I'm like, who is the biggest artist? I'm like, oh my bad. I'm like, you would say um, that you actually I'm like, work with. Oh, I work with people in different ways, right? Okay. So like for example, Coy Ray, I booked her, right? Actually booked her, gave her her first headline show with SOBs. So I was the first one that gave her her first headline show with SOBs. She's big. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know where she was going to be, but I took a chance and put the bread up. You know, so that, um, and then Lotto, I booked her openers. The baby, I booked the openers before for him when he ran through New York. Like, there's a lot of artists that if you ran through New York uh, while I was working at SOBs, like, I was the guy, well, I was one of the guys that booked your openers, you know? Um, so I got him. I got Dave East on my resume because um, my homegirl threw a show and I booked the openers for that. Uh, I have um, Glorilla recently because uh, there was a show in Georgia, and I had to book the openers for that. So shout out to my whole girl Yaya for that opportunity. So it's, it's just different ways I've worked with people on different projects. Some people, like during COVID, I set up interviews for people for just like interviews or press runs. Some people I booked their openers or collabed on a show, or some artists I booked them. So I worked with people in different ways. Yeah, but you do everything, huh? Whatever God bless me. Every you sound like you did. Every sound you do it, I'm like, PR work too. Oh, Booking okay. interviews and stuff. Yeah, yo, I just, the way I look at it is, like, if you're going to be in music, you got to you gotta learn that you're going to wear a lot of hats, right? Because right? it's still about building relationships. And however you could assist people allows you to stay longer in the game. Because you're going to have ups and downs. Because this is still, like, you're an entrepreneur. You putting up your own bread until you get an investor, and even when you got an investor, you got to partner with them to figure out how y'all managing the money. So, in order for you to be a likable individual, you got to figure out how to be resourceful. Because then, when, that's when people care about your music or your brand or all of those things. It's how can you provide to me? Because we all have selfish interests. So, if you know how to help people or find out how to, then people care about your desires. So, you got to wear a lot of hats. So, like you know, in this day age, I always tell people like. Being in the music business, independent is very high. Yeah. So like, and so how do you help artists like manage their money or like when they're on the road with you? Oh, um, I got better at it because I made mistakes. You know what I'm saying? I went through, yeah, for real. Like, if I didn't mismanage money before or go to debt or lose the bread, then I wouldn't know what advice to give or like, oh, for example, like when I'm going on the road, let's say I was eating McDonald's only and just pour judgment with my food, I wouldn't know okay, cool, maybe we need to get some smoothies or let's go get some immunity. Or These these are like things that I had to go through to understand what steps to take, but it's just I had to mismanage or fumble some projects or lose some bread for me to know. Like I know that we don't have to overspend or I know that when it comes to certain platforms, all platforms are great, but we just got to know when to do them or how to work with them. Or maybe sometimes we may not do this interview or this run, maybe let's introduce ourselves to the CEO so that when we come back around, at least... Both parties are able to see what makes sense. So it's just it's just trial and error. You got to, like, your best teacher is your mistakes. You got to try it out. You know what I'm saying? And anybody can tell you whatever they want to do, but you got to figure things out on your own in order for you to figure out what works best. That's it. So, um, so what's next for you? Oh, uh, we, we just dropped some music the other day. Um, that's one. Uh, we just launched like the management firm. We relaunched it, so more value entertainment is the company. So just working with artists and just really want to guide them properly and just help them be bosses and be who they need to be. Um, Day Summit is going to hit North Carolina for the first time, so we're bringing down some execs from United Masters and Pandora um, and just staying consistent, you know. Uh, I just really like to hustle, so I like people that like to hustle and be consistent. So just connecting with more people as much as we can, so.
We got it. And I'm out here for Bayou Classic. Yeah. Trevor's coming back? Yeah. Trevor's <laughs> coming back to Super Bowl? Of course. Yeah, of course. Super Bowl be big, huh? Of course. Gotcha. I'm wherever I need to be. That's one thing I say about Scott. Me, I'm wherever I need to be. So, like, if it's important or it's a place I got to be, I'm going to be there. I, sometimes I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to be there. Gotcha. And also, last but not least, tell the world, I'm like, what can you find you on social media and everywhere else? Uh, Life of S. Morris. That's where you can find me on Instagram. The website, if you ever want to, like, do shows, work with us, figure out how you can do some development or collab on projects, you can go to www. M O R B O O K I N G S agency dot com. Hit us under contact us. Check us out. Um, you'll see a lot of different things there. Just hit us up. I'm here. I'm Scott. What's up? Boom. Um.